Hello everyone, hope you're doing well today. Uh, today the topic of, 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 of the lecture is uh, the exchange variation in the, in the French defense. Right? You know that French defense is um, one of the most popular openings that black can choose after the, uh, the, the, the first move uh, e4. Right? Of course c5 Sicilian is more popular and the same happens with e5. But e6 is, is, I would say, number three, right? The third most, most popular uh, opening. And there is like a eternal problem for all, pl all players who, 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 who plays French that white can pick the line that is called exchange variation. Because uh, from my experience, French players, I mean, people who, who play French defense, they are not afraid of the of the of the main lines. They are not afraid of the advanced variation, but a lot of a lot of a lot of them, uh, they just don't like to play against the exchange variation. And to be honest, it's hard to blame because usually in the when you when you hear the French variation, uh, the exchange variation in the French, you usually imagine something like this, right? Let's say nine knight here, a white plays bishop d3. You can see that. Pawn structure is very symmetric, and okay. Let's say black goes bishop e7, castling. Let's say castling. Uh, h3. Okay, black goes. I don't know knight d7, something like this. Rook e1, rook e8. Okay, you can you can see that position is very c6, right? You can see that position is very symmet symmetrical. There is only one half open file on the e, and a big problem is how to win that position if you play black, right? Because because pos such a positions are very very drawish, and draw is the most common uh, the most common result in this kind of positions. This is the reason today I want to show you uh, I want to I want to I want to show you like a creative way uh, how can you fight against the exchange variation if you are going to play French. And white will try to play that very drawish variation, because you know what this is like a, because I also um, had got this problem, as I'm not I don't even remember did I mention that but French defense is my favorite opening, and uh, when 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 I was playing against uh, weaker opponents a lot of them were playing um, exchange variation right because position is very drawish and even if you know the rating difference is like two or three hundred points uh, it's very hard to um, it's very hard to win this right because positions are so drawish but later then I figured it out that you can also play that variation in a slightly different way and the ma main 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 idea is that white is going to probably to develop standard way and black can prepare and castle queenside and at least there will be kind of unbalanced in this position because because uh, pawn structure still is going to be quite symmetrical right in the center but kings uh, they are going to be at the diff opposite sides so I can make a pawn storm and I can attack with my pawns I can attack opponent's king of course opponent can attack me right but as you can see position will be more dynamic Okay, so today in this lecture I'm going to explain you how to play exchange French uh, with the queenside castle. Okay, so let's start. You need to know that this is like the starting position of the exchange French and there are four main, four most popular moves. The main move for white is of course knight f3. Okay, also, also very popular move is bishop d3. Those are like two most common moves that white can play. Uh, next move that is also quite popular is c4. It's slightly different than the uh, than the other because white decides, white agrees to play with the isolated pawn because sooner or later after c4, those two pawns they are going to disappear, and the d4 pawn is gonna be an isolated pawn. So it's slightly slightly different, uh, and in this case black is going to castle kingside. Uh, but you need to know that that line is not as drawish as standard exchange variation because black has got a pretty clear plan to attack that isolated pawn uh, that will appear at the at the d4 okay and there is also a move that is not very popular among um, among strong players 
but uh, but 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 I have to say that you know among players below 2000 it's like uh, knight c3 is also very very common but it's not you don't need to be scary and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how can you play against uh, that variation today okay but let's start with the main line let's start with knight f3 and now okay the pattern for black of course it depends I'll show you different setups depending on that how does white develop but the basic setup is to develop knight to c6 develop bishop to d6 okay knight, that knight is going to e7 right? so this kind of this kind of setup and later you develop that bishop into one of those three squares queen goes to d7 and black castles queenside so this is like the basic basic uh, pattern uh, for black um, okay um, okay so if white plays knight f3 actually the most accurate move is bishop d6 uh, why not knight c6 in this case if you go knight c6 you have to be aware that white has got this pretty annoying move bishop b5 and after the bishop goes there c4 there is a line like this i even have played it a couple times black captures white goes here you can see that there is a pin uh, a, a6 bishop a4 okay b5 takes takes and you need to know that that position is kind of pretty dropish right this is the reason why uh, it is better to start with the with the bishop d6 moves order and to wait until white develops that bishop because white usually goes something like bishop d3 right now if white decides to go c4 we've got a transposition into the c4 uh, the, the fourth move c4 i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about uh, i'm gonna talk about this one later okay so white goes bishop d3 and now black goes knight c6 of course it doesn't make sense for white to move bishop to b5 because uh, it only loses a tempo uh, okay of course you can see white plays something like c3 c3 makes that pawn uh, stronger right also you can see that it controls b4 square so okay this is like a very common move in this kind of positions okay black develops knight g7 okay white castles okay and take a look usually now it's a time to develop the bishop usually as i said bishop has got three possible squares and you need to know okay it's it's up to you where do you want to develop but usually if white knight is at a three it's a good idea to go bishop g4 because bishop is pinning that knight and for example queen cannot move right because bishop if after bishop g4 bishop will um queen 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 is going to move bishop captures and white castle is gonna be very open so so if the if you have got a chance go to g4 if white somehow plays h3 i would recommend you to go to e6 if you want to play for the win and go to f5 if you just want to play let's say for a draw right because if you go to f5 usually you know there is a bishop captures pawn captures there is like rook e1 right and most probably your king will have to later of course you cannot castle under when you're under the check but later you have to castle uh, king side but in this case just bishop g4 okay rook goes to e1 queen goes to d7 okay knight goes to d2 Okay. and you need to know that one of my favorite things in this kind of plans for black is that white cannot be sure okay it, it looks like black is going to castle into the queen side but white cannot be sure because if you see that white decides to make a very strong attack you can always castle also king side and this is also good right but of course of course your your default plan is to castle queen side because you want to make this imbalance and you want to win in this position and now you can see we've got a positions position with the opposite side castle castles um yeah and in this kind of positions faster wins right uh on my youtube channel i have got also um a video that i explain i think it's like one hour video that i explain how to play in such a with the opposite side castles um yeah, I explained in the text how to play in such a position. Okay, so white is going to make a pawn storm, of course. White starts with this move b4. Of course, white's idea is to go b5. 
And now, of course, black can start to play f6, g5, h5. But what is a good move at this position? It's like rook d goes to e8. It has got two reasons, right? First reason is after b5, there is always d8 for the knight. Uh, so knight can knight can retreat there, right? So so this is this is one idea because a5 square is not always best because that knight can be attacked also by the queen, but also sometimes by the knight. So this is the reason why it's better to escape to d8. And second reason is also that rook is like also fighting, uh, trying to fight for the open e file because e file is still kind of important. Not the most important in this position. More important is attack on the pawn stone on the king, but also it's quite important. Okay, white goes b5, black goes knight d8. Okay, white goes like queen a4. Okay, of course you cannot, you cannot give up that pawn, so you play queen king king b8. Okay, and white goes let's say bishop a3. But as you can see, this is like white's attack is completely. I mean, maybe not completely, but white's attack is is stopped. And now it's a time for black to start to do something. So f6, bishop takes, queen, ta queen takes. Yeah, and then black's idea. White can try to play something like c4, but black is going to play h5, g5, h4. And uh, black has got a very strong attack on the opponent's king. So this is, this is let's say, the, the main variation. So, so, so remember that the main idea is to castle queenside. Uh, remember how to set up your pieces, right? Uh, this is very important. Uh, and remember, of course, there is, you know, the, it's 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 kind of like a risky version of the risky plan for black to play exchange. Um, but if black wants to play against the exchange, but if black wants to win, black has to take that risk, right? No risk, no fun. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the starting position. Uh, and as we discussed, as we discussed, Knight f3. Let's take a look at the bishop d3. After bishop d3, black can immediately go knight c6. White goes c3 usually, bishop goes to uh, d6. Of course, you need to know that if white, if white decides to go like knight f3, um, this is just a transposition into the line that we just talked about. So this is the... Re let's analyze what happens if white goes knight to e2. Uh, in that position, of course, it is still possible to continue the standard way with knight e7, but actually there is like a pretty interesting idea. Black can go queen h4 at the moment. Of course, uh, I really do not recommend for white to castle because there is like a small checkmate. So white will never castle, of course, but white can go like knight d2. Okay. And black develops bishop g4. You can see that black's activity is pretty, pretty big. Knight goes to f1, white is trying to maneuver their pieces somehow. Knight goes to e7. Queen c2, black castles, uh, black castles queenside. And you can see that black has got a clear initiative in this position. Bishop goes to e3, black goes like h6. Okay. Castling, and now of course, if, because sooner or later you will meet someone who, who will realize that you, if you castle queenside, it's might be that might be a good idea also to castle queenside, but in this case black just goes rook h to e8. Of course, it doesn't make sense to make any pawn storm on the on the king side because there is no king, so black is going to concentrate on the e file. But I think all of you will agree that in this kind of position, it's um, in this kind of position black has got. Um, yeah, this is this is a pretty good position for black. Okay, so this is this is this is bishop d3 line. Okay, the next line I'm gonna discuss. I'm gonna I would like to discuss is knight c3. What to do if knight will go to c3? Because there might be a small problem. How to play knight c6 and bishop d6 if that pawn is under attack? Right. Of course, I know that that sometimes it is possible to play bishop bishop here, and if knight captures here, there is there is something like you know bishop. Bishop captures, bishop captures um, h2, and queen takes d5. But I'm not so sure is it such a great idea for black because white loses pawn at h2, uh, and black lost pawn at the at the d5. So it's a central pawn for the rook pawn 
so it's not necessarily uh, great. This is the reason. This is the reason why um, black can just go bishop b4. White plays bishop d3 and then knight c6. Black's plan is gonna be similar. The only difference is that bishop instead of uh, being at d6, bishop is gonna be at the b4. Bishop, as you can see, is also pinning uh, that knight. Okay, so let's say white plays um, a3. Okay, black captures. Pawn captures. You can also see that black lost bishop pair, but you can see that white's pawn structure is far from being good. Okay, knight goes to e7. Okay. And let's imagine white plays. Of course, if white plays something like, I don't know, knight f3, you go here. Castle, you go queen d7, and then black castles queen side, and then black starts the pawn stop, right? This is the reason why white usually has to go like queen h5. In this case, bishop e6, because you can see that g5 and f5, those squares are not available. Okay, rook b1, b6, okay, knight f3. Queen goes to d7, okay, let's say knight goes to g5, black castles also at the moment, okay, takes, takes, okay, with a queen, and as you can see, okay, white has to play bishop e3 to stop the check, and now it's a time for black to start like a small counterplay, g6, so queen from h5 has to retreat, queen retreats somewhere, and knight goes to f5, and you can see that black has got pretty nice uh, attack and now you, you can see that the bishop is under a pressure it's not a it's not such a great idea for white to capture here because black captures with the pawn and you can see that black has got half open g file so rook is going to point towards the king also c4 square is kind of weak so black can later make a maneuver knight a5 knight c4 so yeah so black's position is pretty pretty good so so as you can see you don't need to be afraid of that plan with uh, with knight c3 also. Uh, and if, let's imagine, white is afraid to play a3, because white is afraid of playing with the double pawns, white can also go knight e2, but in this case, of course, knight goes to e7, you can see white castles, okay, and now black develops the bishop somewhere, it can be g4, it can be f5 even, okay, let's, let's, let's take a look at bishop f5, Knight g3 takes, queen takes, okay, queen d7, and now Blake has got a plan to castle this side, and later make some kind of a pawn storm. So you can see that ideas are pretty pretty uh, similar. Okay, so those are those are those are let's say lines with the queen side castle, and there is one exception. If White decides to go c4, I mentioned that already, right? But if White decides to go c4 it's not a good idea to go queenside castle, but but actually by playing c4 that pawn is going to be isolated, so that pawn is going to be a target for black to attack. So black plays knight f6. Of course, it's not black is not afraid that white will capture at the d5 at the moment. It's definitely too early. Okay. White usually goes knight c3. Black can go even bishop d6 at the moment. Okay, white goes like knight uh, knight f3. Okay, black castles. Okay, and actually at this moment, white has got several ways to deal with that pawn. The main line is to capture, but also white can play c5 or white can go like bishop e2. Right? For example, those are those are the ways that white can white can do. So let's start with c takes d5 because this is the most popular um, the most popular approach for white. Okay, in this case, black starts with h6. H6 is a pretty important move because Black's idea is later to go knight d7 and knight b6 and take this pawn. You can see that there are two knights, one knight and another knight pointing towards that pawn. So, uh, so actually, um, Black is trying to Black is trying to take this pawn back. And if somehow Black decides to go knight d7 right now, there is a pretty annoying move, bishop g5. And white is like pinning that knight, yeah. And, and then there is a there is a problem, right, with that knight. There, there might be a small problem to take the d5 pawn back. This is the reason why h6 is important. Okay, white develops bishop. Usually it's bishop e2. In case that white goes bishop c4, there is always rook e8 check, and white's king is in trouble. 
So white goes bishop e2, okay, knight goes to d7, castling knight goes to b6, okay, white usually goes like uh, knight e5, and in that position black captures uh, at the d5. And later black is going to play bishop e6, black is going to play c6, and black is going to play against that isolated pawn, and uh, I will just remind you the two basic ideas when you fight against the isolated pawn is block that pawn, first thing, block that pawn, stop it, because you have to stop it from moving it forward. And second important thing is exchange minor pieces, because opponent will try to create some counterplay with them. Um, of course, of course, uh, and later, of course, put some pressure over that, that weakness. Uh, and by the way, there I, there I also made a video how to attack the isolated pawn, so also you can find it on my, on my YouTube. Um, okay. Um, Okay, let's discuss maybe second second case. If white decides to go c5 at the moment, okay, at the moment white hasn't got any isolated pawn, but the d4 pawn is gonna be backwards. Right? So black goes rook e8 with a check, bishop goes to e2 and bishop goes to f8. Okay, white plays let's say bishop g5, black goes c6. Okay, let's say castle h6. Okay, white retreats, and now. Black has to develop uh, develop the queen side, so black can start with b6, right? And if if white takes, black of course takes with the pawn, and later develops bishop and the knight. Black's position is fine. If after such a move like before, there is a, this pretty interesting idea to play uh, a5, right? To undermine. This is like a very common idea how black can undermine uh, such a such a such a blocked pawns. Uh, okay, so this is this is this is like what happens if white plays c5, but but from my experience c5 is not a very common move. Uh, okay, uh, and also uh, yeah, in, in case that white decides to go for example bishop e2, black can of course capture. You see it this is like a common common idea that black is waiting until white moves that bishop. So white's bishop doesn't capture directly that pawn, but black white has to lose also on tempo. White, let's say, captures. Black black can go like here. Castling knight goes knight goes to b6. Okay, white bishop goes to b3, for example, and then black can develop here, right? And again, black's plan is just to attack that isolated pawn at the uh, at the at the d5 uh, at the d4, of course, right? So. Yeah, so those are like the basic lines. Uh, those are like the basic lines uh, in the in the um, in the exchange variation. Uh, okay, so 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 couple couple things to sum up the variation. You don't need to be afraid anymore uh, of the of the of the exchange French, right? Don't don't hesitate to play French defense. It's it's a pretty pretty good. Uh, variation. It's a pretty good op opening, of course, and for sure you don't need to be afraid to play French defense because of the exchange variation, because you have got the, the, that idea with making a queenside uh, castle that is pretty sharp and positions are also pretty uh, interesting. Um, okay, of course I'm gonna upload it into my YouTube, so you can you can watch it also later. Um, yeah, also I want to encourage you to 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 visit site that you can see on my screen, guide.matbobula.com and you will get a free ebook about um, how to create the best plan in the middle game. Uh, and I also wanna, wanna, wanna tell you that on Wednesday there's gonna be next stream, there's gonna be stream about how to play, how to react when your opponent surprises you into in, in the opening. So, uh, so today we were talking about um, we're talking about, you know, some, some specific line, but uh, on Wednesday we are going to talk about this, how to, um, something that, that, that uh, everyone has to know what to do about something more general. Uh, yeah, anyway, thank you, thank you, very, thank you very much for watching uh, and hope to see you next time. Bye.